in this video I am talking about a video camera. A video camera to make videos with. Panasonic HCX1500. Yes, a video camera. I keep seeing these little uh, pro video cameras, uh, camcorders, all over the internet, but the trend seems to be to use DSLRs, mirrorless hybrid cameras, or cine, cinema cameras, like uh, Sony FS5 or Blackmagic cameras. So who uses these cameras, and are they actually better than mirrorless hybrid cameras or cinematic cameras? Well, let's find out. I wanted to know for a very long time how these cameras actually compare in terms of usability and the quality to the hybrid cameras or mirrorless cameras I'm using specifically. I need to also stress that this is not a camcorder you'd film your kid's birthday party with once a year or take with you on your cruise vacation. This is aimed at the professional filmmakers and it's advertised as a pro camera. The spec of this camera, at least on paper, is just amazing. It has got 422 10-bit internal recording, 4K at 60 frames per second, all the professional broadcast quality recording formats, a variety of those. It has got double card slot, Wi-Fi ready for streaming and more and more and more. This model, the HCX1500, is the lower of the two Panasonic has released. The other one, the HCH2000, is exactly the same camera, but with addition of the top handle with a built-in XLR input and onboard audio. Obviously, you can connect microphone to this and record it through mini jack on the side or record audio externally. But if you bought this camera or you think about buying this camera, you can always buy the, the top handle, attach, attachable, detachable, top handle with XLR audio separately later in the future. First thing you notice, um, picking camera like this, if, like me, you're coming from the world of DSLR and mirrorless cameras, that's your exposure triangle, the shutter speed, aperture and ISO are not exactly called the same on this camera. The shutter is still the same, the shutter speed is, is the same, but the aperture is called uh, iris and ISO is called gain. And the gain is actually measured in dB, like the same symbol as decibel, which is a bit confusing, but once you know, you know. The camera performs very well on fully automatic, as you would expect for a camera like this. But there is full manual override of pretty much all the functions for the professionals who want full control of the camera like this. The image stabilization is just the best, probably the best I have actually seen on any camera. It works great filming handheld even at the long end of that crazy long zoom, it stabilizes the handheld footage very, very well, very impressively. You are not gonna get crazy depth of field or cinematic look easily with this camera, but you get very high quality, broadcast quality video when quality uh, matters. It hasn't got a exchangeable lens, this is actually built in, but it's very versatile, it's 25 to 600 millimeter equivalent zooms. You get pretty much every single focal length from wide to super zoom in one package and it goes from f1.8 at the one wider end 25 to f4 at the 600 millimeter. So, Yes, you can change the lenses, but the, the focal length of this lens is very versatile for pretty much any video application. It didn't take long to get used to the layout. The layout has been really well thought through. The, the double 
the double rings for the zoom and uh, focusing, but you can change the zoom, the second ring to different, to adjust different functions of the camera. Uh, three built-in ND filters. It has got um, the touch screen, flippable screen. It's got a also viewfinder, which is tiltable for filming, to see what you're filming on a very bright days. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't find it difficult to switch from what I'm using to this, it probably took 20 minutes, half an hour to, to familiarize myself with the buttons and where they are to operate the camera well. It's also got customizable buttons. You can actually change the buttons to different functions. It's got a user buttons on top. It's got a five of those, but you can program actually other buttons as well to, to whatever you are using the most. Here I am at the Wally Abbey Medieval the ruins and testing the phase detection of the Panasonic HCX1500. This uh, camera has got a phase detection built in only in automatic mode. If I switch the camera to manual, it doesn't actually, well, autofocusing works, but the phase detection doesn't. Obviously, recording the high bit frames and a high frame rate, and especially in 4K, the other cameras suffer from overheating. This camera actually has got built in active cooling system, and you can see these cool vents all over the, the body. Panasonic claims that you won't overheat in a long, you know, when you're running it long on the higher settings. Unfortunately, I had no chance to test it, but you presume. You know, everything so far they said about this camera, it does work, so you'd presume you won't overheat. And uh, yeah, the cooling system is there. There is no log or row uh, format recording, but uh, there is a Panasonic, it's called Cine D and Cine V profiles. They're not exactly log, but they are a little bit flatter than normal video, and they got quite a lot of dynamic range, range to color grade, and I found I could actually push the underexposed, the overexposed footage a little bit further than expected, and it worked great. I'd compare it very closely to Sony Cine 4 profile. It's not exactly vlog and it's not exactly flat, but it's got that extra tiny bit of dynamic range for those adjustments in post-production. Quite useful and very handy feature of this camera is that you can control pretty all the pretty much all the functions of the camera via app on a phone or a tablet. So if you are event videographer and you're filming weddings or events and you're using this camera or cameras actually uh, from a distance on a static on a tripod and you want to change any settings like brightness, zoom, or start and stop even, you can control it. You can control the camera, this camera via the app which is great if you need to do that. This camera retails here in UK for £1,500 and price-wise compares very closely to Panasonic GH5 or Sony a7 III or Blackmagic uh, 4K cameras. But all these cameras actually have got exchangeable lens systems, so you can actually use different lenses on them. And the GH5 or a7 III, you can take also photos with. This has got no photography options. You can capture still images from the video during the playback, but that's about it. My conclusion to this is that the camcorders, the video cameras are not dead yet. I can't compare this directly. I can't say it really relates to mirrorless cameras or cinematic cameras. It feels completely different setting it up and using it. And it is definitely for a cameraman or camera woman who want professional functionality and professional quality in a very small package. No recording limit and a dual card slot. Make this camera perfect for run and gun documentary type events or interview work. But if you are looking for easy to use once a year camcorder, this camera is not for you. I'd like to thank UK Digital for lending this to me for this little review and to satisfy my curiosity how this camera actually performs. And uh, this is it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, cameras, lenses, photography, video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and see you next time. I have literally promised myself that I won't demonstrate how far the zoom can go, like just on every single camcorder review. But you know what? Here it is.